revival. The Lord was laughing as he opened this heavenly door. Suddenly a great wind raced out the door into the whole earth.
but it's the winds. Hallelujah. It's the shifts of the Spirit. The shifts of how He's made the earth and everything in it. Glory to God. Glory to God. You got to chant hallelujah. Hallelujah. Suddenly the devils were saying what they were going to do. They were planning. They were planning to come and let them all out. Huh? But God's got chains that they don't know about. That's right. You know, we talk about chains. You don't know, change like chains that you put on a car to get it out of the snow. He's going to put that kind of change on the devil and all his works. Woo, and then he's going to put change on us. Then we're going to be like him. Come on. Two kinds of change them. More and more. Hear from heaven. If my people. When my people who are called by my name. What's that word today? Hallelujah. Suddenly, he talks about, he said, yes, my, my servants, the devil said to all of these things that were in the locked up, your time has come. But, but suddenly a great door, a great door that said end time revival opened. And a great wind. What does it say? Suddenly. Hallelujah. Suddenly. A golden door entitled End Time Revival. Amen. The Lord was laughing as he opened this heavenly door. Suddenly, I heard the Lord say this to me this morning. I could break my suddenly. I already said that to me. Suddenly, a great wind raced out the door into the whole earth. It was the outpouring of the greatest measure of glory and anointing any generation in history has ever known. Every place the glory came and was welcomed. Was welcomed. Was welcomed. Attention. 
Is there anything that you can do? And I said, I've called the city and I've asked for boulders. I said, my house has been hit five times. I like where I live. My taxes are not high. It's convenient to everything that I need. I want to tell you, they were running to me with papers. <laughs> fill this out. Fill this out. We're going to come and help you. They're coming on October the 2nd to bring me free gravel.
we get them turned around. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We get them to where they would. And you know, they never came unless there was a lot of trouble. Well, listen, God is, is, is building you up. And working on your life and softening all those tender places. Amen. Come on. Anybody remember when you used to buy a steak and you used to tenderize it, couldn't figure it out, you beat it to death with a hammer. <laughs> well, his word is like a hammer. Come on. And it works on the steak of your life. Glory to God. You get it. I'm not talking about meat. I'm talking about a planning and establishing who you are. And what God will do for you. I'm not up here whistling Dixie to you. I, the Lord has taken care of me well for 47 years. And it's not having a new car or a new house. I've had all those things given to me. But is he doing something new today? Yes. Something new in your life today. Are you listening yes. to me? Yes. Something yes. new every morning. What are you doing, God? Yes. And stay after God. Come on. Keep ringing that bell. Yes. Keep ringing that bell. You know, that. remember that judge said, if I don't take care of this woman, she's going to tell everybody else about me. Keep ringing the bell. Come on. Get the order in the court. God's in the court today. Come on. There's a new order. There's a new order that's in the court today. And are you listening to what I'm saying to you? We've come into the courts of the Lord. We've entered his case for Thanksgiving and in his courts of praise. knocked on my door and said, they heard I was the Rev. I said, where'd you hear that? <laughs> People say things. Get evidence. Where'd you hear that? Who told you that? You see my car get up every morning and go on Sunday morning somewhere? People don't get up on Sunday morning unless they're going to church. Hallelujah! I'm just preaching to you plain old Pentecost. God has got a people in a people. Are you listening? Yes, yes, yes. He's got a people that know him, yes. that trust him, yes. that are willing to go anywhere with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. And he might ask you to do some things that's against your flesh. Mm. But listen, he said it's not by flesh. <laughs> it's not by might. Come on. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to do some things that you've yes. never discovered. That's right. It's not in Webster's Dictionary. Amen. All these people that preach, well, Webster says, well, what does God say? Amen. Come on, I'm speaking to you today. I'm tired of hearing what Webster has to say. I want to know what God is saying. Amen. What's the definition of what he's yeah. saying? And he says, again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. What does it mean to rejoice? And again, I say rejoice. I looked up that word, and it says it's a loud, shrill sound. Just have this, I'll be all right. 
I said, I've been here a week and you have, you're not all right yet. What's the problem? <laughs> I said, face these issues. We don't face issues. Amen. Just whining all the time. And that's what our spirit does. It gets whining. And we don't know what we're whining about. But you got to feed it the right food. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. you got to digest what God gives you. Yeah. And then suddenly the light comes. Mm. Come on. The light comes through the tunnel. We see what God wants. Oh, this is what you're after. Hallelujah. And all the time you got this itch that you can't scratch. And you're trying to figure out what's wrong inside. It's because God is trying to get a hold of that thing that's rooted us and held us back. And kept us from moving on and our faith from working. Are you listening to me? God wants us to be a people. This country is in dire need and in straight places because some preacher was too afraid to tell the truth. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, what do you think? And they just beat all around it. Well, I can tell them what's happening. He wouldn't have said if my people are called by my name. If we weren't in trouble. It's been a theme for two years. We'll humble themselves. <laughs> Anybody, you know, I ask, Lord, am I humble yet, Lord? He gets me another fire. <laughs> Lord, am I humble yet? I get another problem. I'm not humble yet. Okay, let's go back to the oven one more time. We're going to cook this flesh, and we're going to get rid of this that keeps the power of God Come and on. the wisdom of God. Come on, are you hearing yeah. the glory of God yeah. from moving? And that person hasn't got saved yet, and that child hasn't come home yet. What is the problem? I had a friend to call me. She's probably listening this morning. And I'm not going to mention her name. I'm not going to say too much. But she said she had beautiful children. I just They were all sweet. They were all precious. There was just something about every one that was just tempered. You know what I'm saying? She, she Listen, she was on a 40-day water fast. Are you ready for this? Breastfeeding the babies. And the Lord said, you're pouring my glory into them. A wow. sacrificing like this. Wow. And she had one that got into drugs. She said, Sister Ruth, she said, I gave my, she said, I got a hold of God, I prayed. But she said, I knew God wanted a greater sacrifice. She said, I got a hold of God, and she was the, she was the sweetest of all of them. But the devil came along to steal, you understand? Mm -hmm. She said, I gave, and I gave, and I gave, and I gave. She said, I kept sacrificing and sacrificing. She said, everywhere I sent money that I, that the Lord would deliver him from the drugs. You understand? The yeah. devil comes and he puts a hook in that child and that person and that neighbor. Come on. And that family, he puts a hook in a situation. And we're the ones that God is believing for our faith come and on. our prayers. Come, come on. on. Our sacrifice right. to bring deliverance. And now it's our time. We're seeing state by state. We're seeing California. And now Morello's going to New York, New York, New York. Yeah. Yeah. New York. I tell you, Frank Sinatra didn't have the song. We got the song. New York, yeah. right. here we come. Right. Yeah. Yes, they knocked on 12,000 doors in California. That's a lot of doors. Yeah. You get up when you don't feel like it, but they had a move of God. Yeah. Now things are going to be changed. Come on. Yeah. Amen. So you better hope nobody moves into your neighborhood to praise more than you do. Praise You're going to be in trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. I'm talking about, listen, we've been driven out of neighborhoods. I know what I'm talking about. We've been egged and tomatoed and vegetated uh -huh. in our front door that we, my family, my mother, and my father, and we had to move out of neighborhoods. Just because my dad put a sign, a little tiny sign, well, they did it in those days. On the side of his truck said, you must be born again. Amen. Sorry to tell you, it was a Catholic neighborhood. Oh. We had to move out. Oh. This wow. was in the 40s. Wow. Wow. Glory to God. I don't want to tell you some of the facts. So some of the people are still alive. But I want to tell you that there is a suffering, but there's a Savior. Yes. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. There's some things you will not deny his name. Are you listening to me? You will not deny who he is and who you belong Amen. to. Amen. And you won't deny what, who you are. Amen. I had a rabbi to tell me, you're different. Spirit-filled rabbi from Israel, you're different. I want to talk to you. I'm not going to go into that. And I knew what he wanted. He said, I think I already know, but I, I want to talk to you. You're different from other people. I think I know what it is. It was just over a revelation in the Word. Amen. See, this is what people do. They argue over the Word. 
To the Jews, it was knowledge. To the Greeks, it was wisdom. But God doesn't want us arguing over the word. He wants us to say, well, I believe this is what it says, and I'm going to do it until he tells me different. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! One day he said to me when I was thinking about it, I didn't want to do something because I knew the fire and the hell that was there before me where I was going. I fasted seven days on water, hoping that God would change his mind. You know what he said to me? I got out on my knees that morning. I said, Lord, you know I don't mind going anywhere, but I don't want to go here. Well, that's because I won't mind it. You know what he said to me? You want to follow me? Take up your cross. Amen. He didn't tell me how bad it was, and he knew it. Amen. <laughs> He's not going to tell you anywhere. He doesn't know what's happening there. Come on. Right. Glory to God. Right. Put me through fire and water. The wife of that family was getting ready to go home. She had cancer and nobody knew it. God sent me out there to get her saved. Wow. And it was bullets and drugs and adultery and I'm not going into anything else. Wow. One bullet went off one day and if I hadn't, just I just happened to turn back and reach for something. And it went right by my nose. <laughs> now, people weren't shooting guns. It was just that the child was told not to play with daddy's guns, and he got him out of the gun, oh my gun God. cabinet, and he didn't know the bullets were in the gun. And all I could hear was something go off, but it, at the moment that it happened, I was coming out of this room in the house, and the mother had been told, don't let the boys touch the guns. And he took it out, and that bullet came through the house and went right by my nose, right through a mirror frame, right through the wall, and went into the other wall of the bathroom. Wow. We're looking for the bullet. Oh, my gosh. But I remember saying, if everybody's alive, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> the smoke was everywhere. Wow. We never did tell the father about it. But the point was, if I had just felt to reach back, I just stepped back this far into the room to pick up a Coca-Cola. Thank you, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola <laughs> built my house in Virginia, made yep. a dollar on. Yep. Mm -hmm. I reached for a Coca-Cola. I thought I was going to throw it away. I wasn't going to drink any more of it. But listen, that Coca-Cola was 25 cents. It was a miracle I had it. Yeah. I thought I might as well finish it. And taking that drink of Coke saved my life. Wow. That bullet went on just everything right by my nose. I saw it. Thank you, Lord. The oh, devil is trying to kill you every day, but you know yes. Come on, guys. Yes. And she knows the works of the Lord. Yes. Amen. The devil is trying to kill me at least six times. Come on, he might try for the seventh, but I'm going to be raptured right out of his sight. Come on. You're going to praise him. Yeah. 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 Some of these songs pop up before the Lord comes. Day and night, you are the one. Da 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 da. God doesn't mind as long as you're singing to Him. Oh, hallelujah! You got to be willing to die for Him. Yeah. Yes. He's looking for a sacrifice. He wants a sacrifice of praise in the house of the Lord. Remember that song we used to sing it? We bring the sacrifice of yeah, praise yeah, into the house of the Lord. Yeah. And that thing would gallop in that service. And miracles would rise. And the word of knowledge would begin to go over the people. You, you don't even hear it anymore. you got to prime the pump and prime the pump and prime the pump. Finally, the pastor will get a word of knowledge. It used, it used to be in every service. Come on, where's your God? Where's my God? Come on. Where's our God? Yes. That'll make you a little jealous. The jury's out there witnessing to 65 people on a Friday, Saturday or whenever he goes out and they get saved. 65. If we want 65, it's doable. In all of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, where are you going? I'm steering you up. And God's got the biggest poker you have ever seen. And he's coming into the embers of the I've yes. been seeing you in the spirit for days. I just see your worship moment before the Lord, honey. You keep on worshiping him. Hallelujah. You keep on. You need great miracles. I know that. I, you, you've been to the bottom of the barrel, but there's still oil and there's still fire. Hallelujah. 
And God's got a cake for you. I'm telling you, He's got a cake He's going to give you. He's got a meal He's going to serve you. And He said, just keep on being faithful to Him and trusting Him and don't give up. It doesn't matter what others do. Keep on going. Go on past. Come yeah. on. Go on past. Yeah. Did you know there's something past the moon? The man wants to go to the moon. Honey, we're going past the stars. Yeah. Come on. He said yeah. the stars, the righteous are going to shine. Yeah. Like the stars forevermore. Yeah. Come on. God's yeah. beyond all of this. Yeah. He wants to show an enlargement in your heart and in my heart like we've never seen before. Yeah. You know what the doctor told me the other day? I went for a checkup. He said something to me. I said, what you say? He said it three times. He said, you could live to be a hundred. I don't know. I said, doctor. Amen. Are you speaking prophetic? He looks like Einstein. Tell him. Got his hair sticks out on I just love him. He's an old doctor they took out of mom balls. <laughs> you know, they get a hold of you and your insurance and they just rob you. Hear that, Blue Cross? <laughs> and he told me some things. But he's been taking care of me. Amen. He said, this is what you need. And this is what you need. And it's all been good stuff. B12 Thanks and B6. Amen. And, Amen. And, and they wouldn't let some of the blood tests go by. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to figure out spiritually what's wrong with me that I can't get the victory. But if you read about a lot of people in the Bible, they suffered a few things. That's they right. weren't suffering sickness. They were suffering persecution That's and right. rejection. You know, they killed Jesus right away. Came into his own and they own just re rejected him. They deserted right. him. Right. We better know the winds, honey, in the spirit yeah. of man and the yeah. spirit yeah. of things and what is being said and who's false and who isn't. We need more details on prophetic words that people That's are giving. Right. I'm telling you, you men that are prophesying, you need to give more prophetic words, more detail on what God yes. is telling That's you. Right. The real prophet hasn't stood up yet, and I'm going to tell you that. This is good. Our pastor used to give me words. I'd like you to read some of them. Wow. The details yeah, on the trips sure. that I would go on. And on this stop, your, your money's going to run out. And on this stop, you're going to get this amount of money. And on this stop, yeah. this is going to happen. And on this stop, this is going to happen. Wow. Come on, Tracy, wow. your life. Wow. They're the prophet. They're the finger of the Lord. Yeah. They're the ones that are standing for you, for God. Speaking yeah. what the Lord has yeah. to say. We need to start yeah. declaring. And not be afraid. Lord, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, right. Used to sing that all spiritual. Sometimes it causes me to tremble. Yes. Tremble. Oh, yeah. Tremble. I love yeah. it. Tremble. Tremble. That means the Lord is in his holy place. Mm. He's in his awesome place of your life and mine. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. He wants to come into a greater place that will hear him so well. Mm. We'll know his mind and his thoughts. And we don't have an order. We're going to sing three songs and take an offering. Come you're, on. You're a yeah. message that you couldn't have toast that. Come on. on it. Speak it. It's Come true. on. Amen. Come on. We need a message that will Amen. convict us. Yes. That will take us from yes. the place where we are. That we got to come into a new place. That's yes. right. Yes. we got to hear better, Lord. we got to yes. see better. Yes. we got to know more. Are you listening to me? Yeah. He's kept yes. you alive. I'm telling the Lord there was nine in my family. And I'm telling the Lord the other day, I said, well, Lord, there's three of us left. And one of them has dementia. And the other one, I don't know where he Well, I know where he is, but he doesn't communicate. Lord, my family's gone. Sister Ramona calls me on the phone. She said, I had a dream. She said, in the dream, she used to sit here. She'll be back. She said, I had a dream that you said to me, I'm lonely, but I'm not alone. Anybody know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, yes. You're going to have those grace periods in your life where you feel so lonely. Does anybody understand yes, what God yes, is doing? Yes. Is anybody like you are? Are they are they in a frenzy? Are they coming through? You know, the prophet used to come through ringing a bell with a prophetic word through the cities. He said you could hear it from up down the countrysides in Israel. They were coming from a word from the Lord. Is your bell ringing? Hallelujah. Is there a sound of the trumpet? Is God saying something? Is there something he wants to say, but our ears has are not fine-tuned to hear what he has to say? Listen, we need more prophetic word in the church. We need three and four prophecies every time we come together. There's four winds that blow, and we need the direction of the Lord in that service of what God is saying.
what's the preacher going to lay out before us this morning? Uh, is he just going to give us some dessert, tickle our ears, or is he going to fillet us? No, come on, come on, there you go. Wow. Yes. Is he going to fillet us? You say, boy, you sure are rough. I mean, you don't know what rough is. That's I think some of you have had a few rough places. Yeah. Anybody ever had the sandpaper of God on your life? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've had the Lord just speak to me and said, it's my sandpaper. My sandpaper. I didn't oh. complain anymore. Oh, yeah. I stopped oh, complaining. God. <laughs> Getting the rough edges off. Yeah. Smoothing some things out. Oh, Father God. He said, I'm going to make the crooked straight. Yes. I'm going to cause the valleys to be exalted. Yes. I'm going to cause the mountains to come down. Yes. I'm going to cause that thing that's been hindering them. It wouldn't work. I'm going to cause people to hear. Listen. I'm sure Elijah didn't want the raven to bring his food to you. You might not like the way the Lord wants to bring it. I remember I just sort of questioned the Lord one day about something. Be careful about your questions. So Lord, what, what do you think about this? I can't go into too many details. Too many people know would know who I'm talking about. I said, Lord, what, 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 what do you think about this? I've been a watchman for this person. This person came along. I'll be careful. They, they came along one day, <laughs> slapped a check down on the table. Hit it so hard, I thought the table was going to break in two. I didn't want to do this, but the Lord let me do it. Three times they said that to me. Wow. God made them bless me. Because I was doing their job, you understand? But come on. A lot of people yes. don't understand this. Yes. There's a lot of pastors, they have a lot of money come through their hands, and there's people all in the network under them that need help, and they never see it. Mm -hmm. Remember, man, the story I told you? He had $50 million in the bank, and the Lord said he wanted to see him. We better not let the Lord come and have $50 million in the bank. It better be only a few. That's horrible. That's true. Yeah. The Lord said, I want to see him. He said, okay. And he could, the angel starts carrying him, and he said, well, can I see my mansion first? He had three of those Lynn Beanie church cars. You know, the Italian cars. I don't know how to pronounce them. The Lord said, the angel said, we were hoping you wouldn't ask to see them. Come on, come on. You got the picture? Well, yeah. All he had was a floor and one wall. What? I built a Bible school. I haven't charged anybody, and I've given this. And I, listen, a sacrifice is not a sacrifice for the hurts. Yeah. Mm. It's got to hurt. Come on. Sacrifice, your sacrifice of praise will only touch God when something from earth has left to move heaven. Oh I'm just telling you what he showed me. And I've never said to the Lord, I didn't know it was going to cost me that much. And I remember four times that person slapped that check on the table and said, I didn't want to do this, but God made me do it. I didn't even want the money. God was after something else. You understand that yeah. person? Yeah. It just, oh, listen, I don't want to tell you anymore. There's somebody I know I'm talking about. I mean, he went after everything that man loved. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you anymore. He's gone now. He's a great revivalist. So we don't want to do anything that's going to keep God from using us. <coughs> you understand what I'm saying? We don't want to do anything to stop the hand of the Lord Amen. from moving on your behalf. Amen. But he has timing on it. He has timing on your life and my life of what he wants to do and how he wants to handle some things. Listen, I've been I've been so sick this week and I'm not and I'm, uh, I left a, I didn't leave something open. It's just that I haven't handled something properly. But I want you all to pray. I might lose a kidney, and I'm saying this. Oh, no. I'm not saying it in a bad way. My sister lost a kidney and died. I got too much protein in one of my kidneys. And, buddy, it rose up in me like a water fountain. And it hurt so bad. Just the pain kept shooting up. 
my body and I said, Lord, you got somebody praying for me. I know you got somebody praying. Oh, yeah. yes. Lord, I know you know how I'm yes. saying. Yes. I'll pray for you. Somebody call me on the phone. Yes. Sister Ruth, have, have you been well? Yes. I said, No, I haven't. Yes. Been praying for you. And I'm thanking the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. you just listen. God knows everything. Yes. But you have a confidence in you when you know He's doing something, but He's working on something else. Are you listening to me? Yes. He's working on the house. God's working on the building. He's working on the plan. He's working on the power. Yeah. And you got to get to the place where nothing bothers you. Listen, turn the other cheek. It's going to come to that. I've had been talking to people this week on the phone. Some terrible things have happened to me. You're listening right now. I know you are because you told me you were watching. difficult. You're trying to help them get out of the hole they're in. They don't know how to get out. But you got to let God be God. Are you listening to me? Let God be God. He's the God of the universe. He's the creator. He's the God of everything. He can do anything. Are you listening to me? He can He can sort up a hole in a moment. He can clean up a mess in a second. One word from the Lord. He Come said, on. oh, i got to tell you my dream about Donald Trump. He said, <laughs> In one moment, he can. What's the name of that big newspaper out in California where the man's daughter got in all that trouble? Hurts. 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 The head of Hurts said to the newspaper, Puff Billy Graham. That was the word. Puff in 1948. You know what that means? Yeah. Put his name in the paper. That's how Billy Graham got started. Wow. Wow. Hurts. Randolph Hurts put his name in the headline. Let's come and see the man of God. Wow. And I saw a vision. Woo! I feel, wow. oh, I feel his presence all over. Hallelujah. It just takes God. God, one moment to do one thing. And he'll enlarge it and strengthen your life. Yeah. I had this dream. Did I tell you this? That Billy Graham was coming to town. Not Billy Graham. Trump. And I was the one that was to take care of him. I was like <laughs> one of the, the ambassador. And he parked his plane outside, and we're on the inside of this big room. And there's a great big curtain, and I don't understand this part. But the curtain had yellow and blue mm. writing on it. And it was all in order, but there was one part of it that came down this way. It had words on it, and I don't remember what the words were. That didn't fit with the rest of what was written on the curtain. And somebody said, I hope he doesn't ask for whatever it was. It was like a something he needed. I don't, I don't know how to explain it to you. You know, his great problem was if he had just subdued a few things, it would have helped a lot. But he was God's man, okay? It's all we're going to say. And so I said, no, he's already let me know he wants... I said, it's right here in this curtain, and I reached up and touched it. But it didn't go with everything else. The writing on that one part didn't go with the rest of everything else. It was written across that curtain. I said, yeah, he's already asked for it. I said, right here it is. And all of a sudden, the scene changed, and Trump is sitting on top of a chimney. One of them old-fashioned brick square chimneys. Well, I suddenly thought, I'm Billy Graham, when Randolph Hearst said thought. Anytime you see a person see a chimney, that means suddenly God's going to let them know. He's sitting on top of the chimney. It's hardly room for him to sit on it. And somebody's pulling on him on this side, and somebody's pulling on him on this side. And they're asking him, did he think he could take the country again and make it? He said, well, I don't know. He said, let's ask Sister Ruth. <laughs> he said, what do you think? Now I'm watching him. He's way out here sitting on top of this building. He said, what do you think, Sister Ruth? And I'm trying to find the answer. And I remember saying to him, well, you can do anything you want to if you've got faith to do it. And I woke up. Praise his holy name. That's a good dream. Yeah. But I suddenly thought that chimney and where Billy Graham, wow. when Randolph Hearst said, Puff Billy Graham, he was suddenly known. Oh, wow. 
It just takes God to do it. Oh, yeah. Amen. And, and listen, I'm not looking for my name. I would never want to be famous. When I got that book printed, I was glad those three days were over. I was at the conference with Kevin Zeta. I mean, they had to put people around me. They had all these people trying to keep people up. And I thought, what is it? You all know me. You, you come to my prayer meeting. This is not necessary. You understand? We're just people doing yes, God's that's work. Good. That's excellent. It, I'm 83 years old, and I finally got my book out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> What's it going to take to the next thing God wants to do? But I wouldn't want to be popular. I wouldn't want that. Don't do that. Well, as I have some great power, and I can lay hands on you and change your life. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Man. Change your life. Yeah. A pastor wrote a book called, What Have You Got in Your Hand? Had this great big hand on the front of the book. Pastor Heflin and Ruth both wrote eight, they wrote eight books together. Each one of them did about 16 books. Wow. Power in your hand. Showed this yeah. big hand. Yeah. Right. He Hallelujah. said he expanded the heavens with his outstretched arm. Mm. With his hand. Come on. It's a small thing. It's a small thing. Yeah. For God suddenly to come on the scene. How many want him to show up? Yes. 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 Put some things in order the best you can. Yes. Uh, some of you don't know what I mean by that. And I'm not trying to be cheeky here. You've got to recognize God for who he is and do what he wants. That's right. And it's not always easy on the flesh. That's right. Yes. That's right. You're is right. Is it easy, Jerry, getting up? When do you go out on Saturday morning? Uh, I got Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But it's been hot every day. Do you remember? They they did they redid this room here, and they put us in the bistro, and there was no air. Mm. Remember how hot it was? It was in July. Mm. Man, I had fans everywhere. I had 14 extension cords. I put them in my car. It doesn't matter. It's just hot air. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember one woman was on her way to see Judy Brown for counseling. And she had to come through the bistro. <laughs> Who are you people? Awesome. Your son just got out of jail that day. Yeah. You don't mind me saying yeah. that. I've been in jail too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> good. She told me where she was going and I told her where the office was. And she didn't go. She pulled a chair up, man, she was sweating. She stayed through the whole service, and I thought she was going to go on to where Judy was. She said, that's paid counseling. And she's sitting out in the courtyard in a chair. I said, sister, did you go to Judy? She said, I don't need to. I've been kind of. I said, what happened? She said, sister. She said, I don't know where I'm at. She said, it's like I've, I've gone into another Another room, another <laughs> arena, another era somewhere. Amen. She said, I don't have any problems. She said, something happened to So you see, God may have planned that whole day just for that one woman. You understand? Yeah, yeah. And so you had to pay a little price for it. And I had oh, glory. Price. Lord, thank you. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. We don't know who else got to yes. be. Remember, your son danced all over the place. Hallelujah. You know? yeah. He danced and danced. It was like looking at the beauty of four members. I've never seen him make Wow. I knew he wasn't set free yet. Wow. But I saw him in glasses. And I said to him, I said, Brother, who are you? And he said, well, my father is here. And I thought, this is Chris's son. I said, I see you in glasses. He said, I wear them, but I left them someplace, and they're going to bring them to me. But he got his attention. You know what I'm that one vision got his attention. God knows where we are, and he knows exactly what the turning point is of your life. He knows exactly. I am not here saying all these things to you. It sounds like I'm wonderful. Believe me, I've been through mud. I've been through fire. I've been through rain. I've been through trouble. I don't, wouldn't share it with you, and I don't want you to share yours with me. <laughs> we all have our cross to bear. Come on. Come on. Everybody's got their cross to bear. Yeah. Are you yes. listening to yes. me? Everybody's yeah. got their cross. Yeah. And don't try to give it away. And don't try to escape it. And don't try to give it up. Hallelujah. It's not a little tiny thing you wear around your neck. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Jesus had to, 
have someone else to come and help him carry his cross, remember? Yes. Yes. The yes. brother came from Africa pulling his cross. Mm -hmm. He was bringing the nations right into the picture right there. Right. Yes. Come on, this is God. Yes. Yes. Right then. Yes. Wow. Showed what he thought about yes. the black people. Hallelujah. I love this. Come on. We don't have anything to complain about. Yeah. Nothing to complain about. What a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. Like that brother on television.